meeting of the Larimer County Board of Commissioners. Today is Monday, November 18th, 2019. I am Tom Donnelly, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, joined by John Cavallis, Commissioner from District 1, Steve Johnson, Commissioner from District 2, and our County Manager, Linda Hoffman, here at the controls. Uh, this afternoon, the Board has a work session with our Community Planning Infrastructure and Resources Division here from the County, and Lori Kadrich, our Director, is here. Would you like to make some introductory remarks? Just a clarification about the agenda, Commissioners. Okay. Uh, Mark is away from the office this afternoon, so I'll be covering those two topics. And our first topic is a code compliance update. Okay. How are you? Uh, Kari Madsen, uh, code compliance supervisor. Um, a couple weeks ago, you got an email regarding a complaint that we have on 1405 Morning Drive in the Loveland area kind of asking the status of that complaint and why it had been taking so long. Mm -hmm. Tony's got a timeline of events for that complaint as well as a map. It's right there at the, you know where, you know mm -hmm. where the Mockwa yeah. Hills is? It's yeah. right at the base of the, right at 34. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's a property yeah. where um, a per, the property owner has a couple of RVs on the property. They have a couple of homeless families that are living there. Mm -hmm. The property is immediately adjacent to city limits. It's in the Loveland Growth Management Area. And up until last Thursday, the property owner has not made contact um, other than probably six months ago when he spoke with, uh, she spoke with Tony and one of the planners um, assigned to meet with them. Um, they were directed to go to the city to speak with the city about annexation since it was immediately adjacent <laughs> to the city limits Yay. and was not able to, to gain any traction. So <laughs> fast forward to where we're at now. Um, they came in last Thursday and again were given direction to go try to, to, to talk to the city. Um, at this point in time, we've given them two weeks to do that. And um, at that point in time, our intent at this point is to schedule them for a public meeting. Wow. Um, the, their, their path forward is a couple of options. One is to hmm. annex into the city and okay. potentially wow. what she wants to do is develop an RV park. It's a, it's a fairly uh, small site, Narrow. about three quarters of an acre on a corner of Eisenhower. Oh, is that all it is? Yeah, it looks so like it's bigger. Three quarters of an acre. Huh. Um, so it, 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 you know, it's probably going to have some some difficulty meeting standards wow. in the RV park at that particular location at that particular size. I'm not clear why a code compliance issue needs to go to the city of Loveland. Because it's immediately adjacent to city limits. Is that we, we always send well, a code? No, that's... Is. It's in the growth management area, so the, the, the default <laughs> is that they need to seek annexation. Because they have a code compliance issue. Oh uh, no! Because no, they she, want to develop. Yeah, she oh, came in. Right. She came in on in Best February and asked yeah. for a pro to, to, how to get approved as an RV cool. park. Right. And so for them to do anything other than a use by right, mm -hmm. that requires them to um, seek annexation and then develop into the city. There is a route there. If the city said no, they could appeal to you all to come mm -hmm. and develop through the the county. Um, and that you know would involve rezoning and appeal to you first, then rezoning, and then a, potentially a special review. So that's a long process. Um, in the meantime, you know it's our, our, our opinion that use probably needs to cease, um, regardless of which way she's going to want to go. And that's the reason for wanting to go to a public meeting and then okay. move forward. Gotcha. You guys have any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just what's the what's the owner? Oh, Mil Deborah Mills. Okay. I might know. Huh. I might know that. Do those people have like um? Well, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. I probably know them. My. I know half of these people. Jerry Schlees and all the good ones. Thank, thank you. Hey, apparently, by the way, Karin, we had the elected officials lunch just mm -hmm. preceding this, and um, apparently we didn't get the Mullenbrook, um, the, co the Mullenbrook costs hadn't been added to their um, property tax statement at the time of the, of the sale. 
So they'll be on next year's yeah. sale for the 2019 taxes. For the 150000 or whatever. Right. The yeah. deadline for that is, was November 1st. Okay. Yeah. So I'm... I don't know if anybody would have bought it actually anyway, but unfortunately those neighbors are going to wait another full year then at least. They'll wait four full year years from now before you get right. a treasurer's deed on that property. Yeah, the demolition was actually after last year's deadline. Yeah. So, right. so it's just that, I'm just telling you because it's going to add a whole, I mean, yeah. the Kimber Kreitzer and all those people are going to be, they're going to be really upset by the time that actually changes ownership if it does. So to clarify a little bit, what um, it Are made you it. Clarifying or me? I, I'm clarifying. Oh, I bet you. It made it, it onto the first available tax right. bill. Right. There was some. Um, it, it was not a smooth process to get it on there, right. but mm -hmm. it did make the de deadline and get onto the first available bill, which will be the twenty. 19 bill payable in 2020. 2020. Yes. Right. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Linda. Okay. We agree. Good. But they just did the tax lien sale for the 2018 taxes payable in 2019. Yes. And it was not on that bill. No. Right. What well, couldn't be? Right. Well, right. Actually, try true. Well, well we it depends. The, we did the demolition in 2019. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready for item number two? You bet. Maybe. All right, item number two, Country Club Road. As you know, we've had a temporary restriction on the road related to trucks, and it was based on the length of the truck. And staff is considering, and we've been working with the attorney's office, to change it to a permanent restriction, or more not a temporary, but a more permanent one, and that the ban would be on semi-tractor trailer units. And we've been working with um, the attorney's office to get the best definition that could be regulated, as well as the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department is in support of this. And <clears throat> we've been visiting with Commissioner Kafalis because citizens are contacting him about it. But before we went through with that kind of change, we w I wanted to bring it to the board to see if um, at least two of you were supportive of us moving forward on that. And the reason is the 90 degree turn right there by the country club. That's That's correct. Topography of that turn yep. or whatever the. Well, why is. don't you guys? You, we got a fully staffed engineering department upstairs. Why don't you take care of that instead of closing off all these routes to trucks? That, fix that corner? Yeah, go buy some right away. We've done that before. You probably have to buy a house. Well, maybe you would. You would. You, maybe you would. How do we know that? <clears throat> have I you. Know. I was just out there with them and looking at the road and that's at least what the long-term thinking would be it doesn't look like you would to me but I'm looking at what do I know it, looks like you could take right away it's not just the turn it's the it's the volume of truck traffic and yeah, we have to have a defensible reason and we can't just say oh there's too many trucks that wouldn't that wouldn't work it's an, here's what it looks like it looks like another one percenter decision by the Board of County Commissioners following last week's one percenter decision I mean, if that's structurally it's can't like the handle, federal bailout, big bank bailout now. If that here. can't handle a truck, that's one thing. If structurally engineering says it's not suitable for that truck, that's one thing. And again, I'm speaking for Mark. So the way I understand it, there were two reasons. One was uh, Peterson, because he's not available right now, and I'd be happy to have him speak to you directly next week if that works better. I think there should be a really definite engineering reason. I think he should look at we whether he just, can whether he can fix fix the problem. We go out and. We go, go out and, um, if need be, we take public pro or p private property for for right away. All the, I mean, not all the time, but safety we have man. for safety reasons. The two reasons that I remember, Commissioner, was the width of the road and the lack of pedestrian amenities. The num three reasons, sorry, the number of driveways that directly access the road, and that turn. I, mean, I would be interested to know if that's a unique situation here or. Okay. exist in other places because we don't want to close the road just because people don't like the truck traffic that'll okay. then we'll be doing that everywhere there's all kinds of driveways on Douglas Road I mean it's a it's functionally classified higher right yes it's an yes. arterial and yeah and, and and country club is a collector street and I, I believe correct me if I'm wrong I thought the county engineering department was recommending this longer term prohibition on semis 
that's my understanding for the reasons that I gave. I think it'd be good to hear from the sheriff's office too, if they don't mind. Okay. Maybe you have that. I don't know. Well, we got to be real careful. If you're going to do something like this, you have to have real specific reasons to this. Otherwise, we'll be closing. Be, down. We It'll have be, been working. Be, we'll be getting requests that we don't. And plus, you're just going to push problem. that. You're going to push that truck traffic somewhere. And I mean, that's what you're going to do. Complain. And if it's a safer place, that might make sense. But if it's just because somebody doesn't like it, that's not going to be a very good idea. You're pushing it out of rich people's neighborhood into regular people's neighborhood. Yeah. That's what it looks like you're doing. I mean, I'm just saying that's what it's going to look like you're doing. Okay. So I'll have Mark come back with. Yeah, I mean. I, Um, I don't doubt that you have the correct information, but I might have some questions for Mark if you okay. don't mind waiting. I don't. Okay. Because I've, all I've got is a paragraph from him. Okay. Mark has a good way of explaining things. <laughs> like, he does. like a like an engineer. There's no way you can. There's plenty of room right there. Yeah, of course you could. Oh, Linda. Email. With the existing right away, yeah. well, you might be have to buy right away, but you could do it anyway. All right, that's fine. Come back. Okay. I'm almost afraid to go to the next item. Good. Hey, <laughs> we're doing well with this one. I didn't do, and this is another one that Mark was at all day. <laughs> I do know a little bit more about it because Linda and I had attended a meeting as well, and it's on the Front Range passenger rail, mm -hmm. and it's an interesting situation. Um, it's a legislative group that has been formed mm -hmm. to explore in these topics, and they're really looking for somebody to be an advocate for their work moving forward. And both Mark and I are a little uncomfortable being an advocate well, the only one, yeah. for that work. And so we're coming before you to see if any of you as elected officials would like to participate. They have a pretty aggressive uh, schedule. They like to meet every six weeks. Um, and then there is a community outreach component to whoever serves on that as well. And this is for I-25 rail? What is this for? They've got a, they've already got a, they've already got a, um, uh, well, they've got a board too. They've got a. Mm -hmm. So this is. an MPO representative already. Yes. Suzette. So what is this person going to do? Is this an official member or what? No, this would be an official a member. member. They gave the county a, a board seat? It's, it's right. A, it's a stakeholder group. This is a, this is oh, an out, oh, outreach group. It's a coalition that's yep. looking oh, okay. at this front so, range rail. It's not a, I wouldn't describe it as an advocate position. It's, that is what they, they the words they used at the meeting that Mark was at. And that's what, of course, made him a little uncomfortable in being a technical representative. Well, do you want to do it, John? If you, if you want to do it, you're going to be our logical choice. So it, here's exactly what it says. Going back to the purpose of this group, it appears to involve public information, moving forward for advocacy for the rail, funding, and implementation. I served on that high-speed rail committee that did the study, um, you know, <clears throat> nine or ten years ago um, I'm not interested in serving on this one though because frankly I don't I don't like that I don't like the rail project I like the bus project that we have already okay. I think it's appropriate to offer my name as a participant and I'll just I'll participate as I can okay thank you great that was easier than my thought it was it just didn't seem a good idea to have somebody from engineering on the group after it was described. We'll, there'll be a technical committee, so we'll serve on that. Yeah. Um, and then the last item, Rob is here. I know that uh, the board is aware that Northern has changed their process from an IGA process, requested to have it changed from an IGA process to a 1041. And one of the things that we had hoped that we'd be able to do today is give you an update on that schedule because that'll be a scheduling. So before you start, Northern is Northern is um, attorney feels um, unsure if we had the ability to waive the 1041 process. Is that am I? Um, I think I. I think I would phrase it this way. At least how I heard it was that the attorneys representing Northern felt that their research supported 
clearly that the Board of County Commissioners could authorize or deny a 1041 permit and that the research that they did was not as clear whether the Board of County Commissioners or any Board of County Commissioners could waive the permit through an IGA. Well, we have waived um, 1041 I don't, in the past on projects. I know, maybe not this, of this scope or scale, but... You've waived it where there's been an appeal presented to the code, so you've had to find that it didn't meet the intent or purposes of falling under the 1041 process. I think that's true. I remember or Loveland, did a, Loveland did a waterline project once, and we exempted them from 10. Uh, we did 1041. I don't think we did. It was right. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the morning drive waterline was a 1041, but it was right after we'd adopted the regulations. So, so what did we do? We just we just granted it without benefit of a hearing. We didn't we have did a hearing. hearing. We did hearings. I don't think we did. You better check, but I I thought we I think we're well within our rights, but that's fine. Well, I mean, the model we used for the code looked at other counties who introduced the IGA premise, and um, you know, I will defer to the attorneys if they don't think that there's it's substantial good. statutory authorization for okay. the IGA. So process. is it statutory authorization, or is it a deficiency in our code? Do you know? I, the way it was explained to me is it was statutory authority, is how Northern's attorneys were examining it. Well, then that, there's nothing we can do about that. So at this point, um, schedule-wise, I'm in the process of trying to put together the county team to do the application conference for the permit, which is the first formal step in the application. It's so stupid because we get to go in and modify the code, make the pipeline size bigger than their pipelines proposed, and and they, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't be subject to 1041 at all. Well, we've got the pipeline. We have the water reservoir. We have the pipeline and water reservoir designations sure. both in the code. So we'll be doing a pre. The current code. We'll be doing a pre-application conference for the reservoir and for the pipelines, okay. and with the reservoir, the pertinent recreational facility. This process will narrow considerably our criteria and ability of things to consider, won't it? Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, that we had the way the IGA process had been written, you know, we had to still meet the intent and purposes of the 1041. So you'd have to look to those review criteria in your negotiations discussion about the intergovernmental agreement and what came out of it. Now, whether um, tit for tat, line for line, each of those 12 criteria had to be met exactly with the IGA or not. Um, is arguable bottom line is what I, we heard from the attorneys is the IGA process gave you the flexibility to negotiate and have direct interaction rather than saying yes or no what happens to the items that we discussed with them in the IGA process that the recreation were important to us do they, do they well, get folded into their 1041 application? I know it's up to them. We can't really speculate, but right. do we still? Will they still talk about those things in their application? Recreation or? can't be subject to the 1041 well, process. Right? Um, the way the reservoir designation is written, the pertinent facilities to the reservoir, i.e., uh, recreation, are specific. Could include boat ramps, and which is what if, and if like that. Uh, um, Tom and Steve, you may remember we went round three different rounds with the water reservoir designation. General, specific to the appurtenances, and then we went back to general because we couldn't, you all, the decision the planning commission, you all couldn't agree. And it was really Lou's championship more than anything else on the recreation piece that had us write it that way. So I believe we can incorporate much, if not all, of that recreation conversation mm -hmm. into the okay. reservoir conversation. The other thing we're going to have to do is spend some time in the 1041 process um, pointing at the EIS for the reservoir itself. Um, we can't just say, well, the EIS is done, but we're not going to reinvent that because I know that we so clearly the board's direction when we adopted the code. So our intention is to try to put this team together to do the pre-application conference here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I would anticipate that that schedule we provided to you a couple weeks ago will close, fairly closely match the target dates for Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners action. We may have to fudge it a little bit, but we got enough other big items on the plate that both uh, Northern and county staff want to get done 
by the end of the first quarter or close to the beginning of the second quarter next year with whatever hearing process we've got. Okay. And has this been put out on the public website? Because All we've done at this point, until we have a schedule and a pre-app, uh, no, nothing is going on. Yeah, so it, still shows the, it still shows an IGA schedule yeah. on there? It doesn't even have an IGA schedule because Bill had not gotten back to you with an amendment to the MOU for that schedule to formally change it. Okay, so okay. we'll, in the next day or so, get out and indicate, either, maybe even at your direction, post a copy of the letter to um, uh, Linda. To, you know, to that I think that would be a good idea. There's significant yeah. public interest. I mean, yeah. people were wondering why we didn't have that meeting and. November, November mm -hmm. 14th yeah. or whatever. So Last week. we should tell them there's not going to be an IDA process. There's going to be a URA process right. at Northern's request, which they have the 1041 right to do. A 1041 process. Okay, Commissioner Qualls. Does this decision by Northern to go from a to go to a 1041 permit process is it in response to the letter we received? Last week, from the Save the Poodle attorney um, regarding the uh, the reservoir issues, it is so. not in response to that letter. The timing was very coincidental. Uh, yeah, but it is related to what some yes. of the points that they some were of the points up. that were in the letter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Although, in my conversations with the attorney, just as a sidebar, it has never been our intention as staff to ignore the reservoir site in our analysis and review. Uh, the IGA focused principally on those th other three elements, but our review was never going to have ignored some <clears throat> some board action on the reservoir itself. Thank you. Uh, okay, so you'll have a new schedule for us in the next week or two. Ideally, I hope so. Yes. Okay. We're thinking that everything will work for the first quarter, just like we had planned before. Great. As long as we're able to complete a pre-application meeting and Northern submits its application in early December. Right. Actually, um, the timing would be closer. Uh, actually, closer to their original schedule, which would be early January. Mm -hmm. So we get the pre-application done in here in the next couple of weeks, and we get the application materials in early January. Then that 90-day shot clock, which we've always talked about, starts, which puts us end of March, early April, depending on when we pull the trigger on a complete, okay. the operative term is complete application. Is there anything else coming? Is there any, I mean, do you have any big, I mean, yeah, I know you got land use code water. and all that stuff, but um, is there, are there any more um, gravel pits gravel pits or challenging, do you have any kind of permit or applications no, right now? Them all. Yeah, you do them all. Yeah, I got the target on my back. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we got like potentially Timnath IGA, um, you know, the Cestus thing, rewriting the land use code. I mean, there's some bad ones. As far as neighborhood impacting projects or there is significant substance um, I mean you never can tell right um, there may be oil and gas Northern regulations Colorado water association oh, yeah. pipeline that is small it will only, it will only rise to the level of location and extent mm -hmm. um, running from their well field up by the power plant to a tank at like County Road 15 and 74, somewhere in there. Mm. Um, it's a natural gas pipeline or no, oil pipe? It's a water oh, pipe. it's a water line. Oh. We tried to eliminate some redundancies in the system and improve, it and improve efficiency. Um, no, there's mm. not much gravel. I can give you a little side note very quickly. Um, I'm advised by the representatives from Loveland Ready Mix that the Donaldson brothers are about to throw in the towel. Surrender. On their, on their permit. Yeah. I don't remember which one is it. That's the one just to the north. The access to 287 one. Okay, that was the one north of North of Lumber. Nice. You mean throw you mean okay. just give up their approval? Yep. <clears throat> they may not do anything actively, but they they have been actively trying to market the property and I think they can't find a, they can't find a buyer. So what does that mean as far as uh does that make it uh open up the possibilities of having some of the truck traffic go out that way? I doubt that it. Kind of eliminates that it probably makes that it even less likely. The yeah. Opposite. Much less likely. What it, what it probably will do is it'll make it a residential development eventually that will. Well, they will get it mined as a residential development as opposed to dispose of that material, which historically has not been determined to be all that value. Well, what I've heard is that there's 10 or 13 feet of overburden over the gravel. It's, it's there's too much there's too much dirt over the top. Yeah, there's 13. Yeah. 
There's 13 feet of dirt and then 13 feet of gravel. So to get to it, it's really and it's the not far great. northern edge of that floodplain deposit, so it pinches out and it's not very high quality. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just to let you know that, that you would likely see some communication in the next couple of weeks. So, um, well, the so if they do have to, if they do uh, get, do away with their special review, and they would seek some other type of use. Does the board have to, or is it the state that has to make a finding that the that the gravel uh, resource is not? Um, they would have to come to you with a with a request for the board of county commissioners to find that although it is identified and designated as a commercial mineral deposit for the following reasons, it is no longer viable. It's not viable. So. It's economic viability. The board's acted on economic viability, both from mobilization costs, parcel size, uh, infrastructure in place, all of those things have, for the few times you've done it. Those are the things that you, those are the items you right. at, which are items that are in both the statute yeah, and in our because plan. Because the mineral resource is considered so valuable to the state. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, well, interesting. So we'll keep you posted in the next two weeks, I hope, on finalizing, and I, firming up the schedule. I don't know if you looked at the schedule today, but everything going to stay on consent as far as you know? No one's told me from the staff otherwise. Okay. Any other questions for these guys? Mm -mm. All right. Linda, anything? Board's adjourned.